Simone Sanders. My question is, do she have a hatred for progressives and non-democratic supporting blacks? And the reason I say that is because it seems like she do. <laughs> and we're going to talk about her uh, a whole lot. We've talked about her a lot. Man, I call her the breast of Soros. She is literally the Democratic Party's breast and brightest. Because <laughs> she, she, she ain't nothing but head and breast and shoulders. Head, breast, and shoulders. That's it. That's it. Her mouth ain't nothing else, and you're going to find out in a minute. Uh, but let me get myself up here. Give me a moment, and, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, she looked like that dude. Remember that dude from the 7-Eleven commercial? For me. Well, let's get into the story. Uh, Simone Sanders. You remember Simone Sanders when back in the day she did something kind of like this? I call her Simone the Biden butt licker. But kisser, bootlicker Sanders. Remember this? Remember that when the dairy workers came by and they protested against Joe Biden and uh, Simone Sanders had to show off? Listen. In the neighbors, we come from the crib. Yes, dairy dies! Yes, dairy dies! Yes, dairy dies! Yes, dairy dies! So all these people want to do is protest. And these people care more about Biden's bull crap coming out of his mouth. And the same thing with Trump. Just let the man speak. No, let the protesters protest what he's speaking. Because there's a lot of things these politicians are not telling you that they're covering up. And it takes the activists to come up and talk about it so you can talk to him about it. And that's what these dare protesters was, were doing. They were coming on the stage to protest um, Biden's policy concerning the dairy industry. And then lo and behold... Out of the left field, it's not Lawrence Taylor. It's not uh, Mean Joe Green. It's Simone Sanders. class is getting clobbered, so I ain't going to do a doggone thing about it. <laughs> the middle class is getting clobbered. Bridge to Jill, the battle I grew up in. So everybody, they're getting hurt. They're badly hurt. And guess what? They're the place where we come from, many of you come from. It's where we're... But they're not from the places where we are now and where you are now, Joe Biden. But let's get into this. This is what Simone Sanders had to say recently about Joe Biden being challenged for the presidency of the United States. It's not nice, it's condescending, it's arrogant, and uh, this makes me dislike her as a person even more. But, but if the, the question, question is, like, should Joe Biden run for president? Well, my question is, why shouldn't he? And if the answer is because he... Nobody's stopping Joe Biden from running for president. Should he run? The man is 87 years old. He's putting it, the chance of him winning is slim to none. You're not going to be able to fear monger and scare black people into supporting Joe Biden again after he, he claimed he heard our voice and he goes for the first four years and do everything for everybody else but black people, even though you claim he got a black list of achievement. They're not. They're not our list of achievement. There are black list achievements that he put on his list, but they're not the black list of achievement that we demanded you to put on your list and push forward. All these first black, first black, first, that's tired. That's old news. Thank God we got it. But the point of you being the first means you need to be the one to first do something for black people. And that's all Joe Biden has done. Going to Howard University, getting a doctorate degree is not, doing something for black people, an honorary doctor degree. And it doesn't mean that you're down with the blacks. If it wasn't for Kamala Harris and pool, you wouldn't get that. And how come you got it before her and that's her alma mater? So that's all a political ploy to get black people eyes on that. And then they talking about reparation over here, all another political ploy 
which I do support, another political ploy to see, hey, this is what we're doing. The Democrats, Gavin, New- Gavin Newsom and, and Joe Biden went to, you know, Howard University. Man, shut up with that stuff. Joe is too old to be running for office. He's in cognitive cognate decline. He's entering, his, he's well into his grandpa years, where grandpa think he can drive down the highway when he can barely drive up the streetway where he lives. And you need to take the keys from him. Been through that before. It's hard to do that. That Negro still figured out a way to get his own set of keys and still sneak out and get the car when I took the keys. Let me keep going. He's old. I think that's crazy. Yeah. I think that's insane. And also, these, these people on the left and... Now, this is the part I want to get to. She thinks she is the know-it-all of Democrats. She considers herself a political strategist, which she is not. She sucks. She is not responsible for Joe Biden winning. Bernie Sanders is responsible for Joe Biden winning by dropping out. Obama is responsible for Bern- for Joe Biden winning because he of what he did in South Carolina. Look here, y'all. Gonna, we're gonna we're gonna have to make we we got a plan. We got to stop Bernie at all costs. I've admitted that in the newspapers. We got a plan. We're going to shut this down in South Carolina. Because if Joe lose South Carolina, it's over with. And I can't keep my agenda going. We're going to have, what, Bernie Sanders' agenda? <sighs> and my, 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 my progressive friends and these mealy mouth. My progressive friends. See, this is, this is what you call gaslighting. This is what you're being condescending. My progressive friends. She's trying to say that she's one and those are my friends, but they need to get their self together. I know more than them. I better than them. I'm a strategist. I know about winning. Progressives, the way to progressive friends, and by the way, most progressives are not part of a party, so she has to say progressive friends. And then she talks about the Democrats. And let's go to this. Democrats, I just want people to understand Democrats. I just, my progressive friends and these mealy mouth Democrats, my, my progressive friends and these mealy mouth Democrats. This is how she looks at you. You're my progressive friends. And you mealy mouth Democrats. How do you, how do you expect to win somebody on your side and you're calling them names? That's the reason why Hillary Clinton lost because she talked about the Bernie Sanders supporters. And she lost because she talked about the Trump supporters. And they continue to pit this war between left and right and right and left and red and blue and blue and red and Republicans and Democrats, Democrats, Republican, liberals and uh, conservatives and blah, blah, blah. With this stuff, not understanding that most people in this country don't subscribe to your partyism. And we taking these name callings personal, but yet you want us to come support you yet. You are the Millie Mouth one. You are the ignorant, condescending, democratic fool. You are the one that's lapdogging and kissing Joe Biden's wrinkled up butt cheeks and doing whatever you can to kiss that butt cheek, stroke the you-know-whats, just to get on the good grace of good, 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 good zaddy, good master. I just want people to understand. Y'all can say whatever y'all want. Y'all can say whatever y'all want. You sound like Roland Martin. And guess what? We gonna say whatever we want, and we ain't gonna listen to you, and you can shut your mouth up with your mealy mouth mouth. On background to the New York Times and any other paper. People can whisper all they want in the political playbook. Y'all know how this works. Okay, if the city she's gonna tell you how it works, and she assumed that you know how it works. And this is not how it works. This is her gaslighting trying to play you for being a fool. And if you sit here and subscribe to this stuff, then you are a fool. This is not how it works. This is a democracy. Every election should have a challenger. You should never have a straight straight shot into the seat. And the reason people talk like that because they fear that their agenda 
is going to get tossed to the side. We've yet completed our goal. We yet completed our mission. We, 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 we need, we need more time to get more power. So you know how this is go. No, this is not how it goes, but she's going to tell us how it go. The city, the city president is a Democrat, the de facto, the head of the Democratic Party, okay? If the sitting president... Just because you're the sitting president, you're the president of the United States. You're not the president of the Democratic Party. Even though the Dem Democratic Party decides to lay power to that Democrat, the Democrat Party can say, hey, you're going away from our policies and our procedures, and we don't need your services. No more. Understand this, and we've said this over and over again, that the Democratic Party is a corporation. These party, polit these party organizations are corporations. They make decisions based on leadership, based on bylaws and rules and regulation, not based on public interests. You are not the one who makes the final decision. You can go vote. But they can have those super delicate, super delicate, um, um, can't even say the word, absurd power over your vote. In other words, you can get the popular vote, but if the um, super delegates or the delegates don't want that person, they're not going to get it. So this young lady works for. Left media, no down the road, no down the middle. She got that job. She worked in the White House under Kamala Harris. She worked in the Joe Biden administration, hoping to get black people on the side, and it didn't work that much. Uh, all they can do is scare us, and that's, that's tired out. That's not going to work no more. I'd rather die. I'd rather die in faith than live in fear. I'd rather die in faith than live in fear. Um, but the whole point of this is she's getting ready to lie to you because she's a bald-faced, bald-headed, big-breasted, yeah, I said it, liar. I don't care what her husband say. President who's a Democrat would like to run for re-election? That's y'all not me, honey. Ain't no... No, it doesn't work like that. If you decide to run again, that's your nominee. No, you still got to go through. What's the purpose of having an election? You think, well, the Democratic Party don't need to facilitate a primary. The Democratic Party has no choice but to facilitate a primary. The only way they can go free with that person not being primary is somebody don't challenge it. The American system say you have a right to challenge a president, uh, presidential candidate, whether they're in your party or outside your party. That's democracy. If you feel that person vision for America is taking America down, it is your right to challenge him. Why would we just let you continue to bring us down without having somebody in there to say, stop, you're failing. You're failing as president. You're failing as senator. You're failing. So I need to challenge you. So what? Joe Crowley and all the rest of these senators and uh, congressmen, they were in power. They shouldn't have been, they shouldn't have been primaried. So in other words, you think the primary process should not be involved in electoral politics at all, Simone Sanders. That we just need to just, if you're in that position, you should never be challenged. That's the weakness of the Democratic Party, and they try to put that in their bylaws. They don't want nobody being challenged. They want to remain in power over and over again. You are no different than dictators across the country, people who you claim to be dictators. You don't think Putin need to be challenged? Oh, no, you think he... By him not being challenged, that he's absurd or he's displaying his uh, dictator power. If Kim Jong-un, you believe he should have somebody to challenge him and there should be voting and there should be legal counting and stuff like that. But they think that I, I, I shouldn't be primary to this seat. An organization who thinks somebody should not be primary within their organization is no different from a person who's saying a presidential candidate like Donald Trump should be in primary. If Donald Trump was in power, you don't think he should be primaried? He's the sitting seat. That, yeah, every four years. He's up for re-election, idiot. Every president 
every four years is up for re-election, starting within his party to see if we can find a better candidate or a better president with a better vision to challenge the person in the, Demo- uh, in the opposite party, party, opposition party. This woman is something else, gaslighting y'all. And y'all need to be lighting up her Twitter, letting you know, letting her know how you think about her. Because she definitely letting you know how she think of you. You're a million miles Democrat. The DNC is not creating no. a process for somebody to private no. The DNC has no choice but to create. As a matter of fact, they created. Matter, she don't know too much about Democrat National Committee. She don't know about bylaws and stuff like that. You have a right to challenge her. She's just making up this stuff, hoping that black people sit there and fall for this bull crap. And this idiot with the fro sitting up there co-signing and not challenging her. Not pushing back, dude. What is wrong with you? And see, these are the people that once they get on democratic media, in order for them to advance and progressive in democratic media, maybe get their own show and get some support behind it, they have to become yes men or lap dogs or butt kissers or brown nosers. And clearly Simone Sanders is one, and this guy's one because he won't even challenge it, but he always been one. And, and so, so instead of people uh, playing in this, this fantasy, fantasy land, land. Playing in this fantasy land. You hear this? Do I have to hit the button? Let's sit your dumb ass down. And show. You, 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 you hear this? Listen to this fool. Fantasy land, like a, a dimming in this fantasy land. So Bernie Sanders comes on TV, and you know how I feel about Bernie Sanders. I was all in, but that's why these fake politicians, man. Bernie Sanders would disagree with you, Simone. And you worked for him, and you said that he, um, Bernie is right. Your first political mainstay gig was with the Bernie Sanders campaign who went around saying that there should always be a primary challenger in the primary, that somebody should have primaried Obama, but we didn't. And it hurt us more than helped. And now you're subscribing to the opposite of that. No, Simone, this is America. This ain't no third world country. Now, I honestly don't subscribe to what they say about these dictators. America always calls somebody a dictator so they can have a reason to come in there and do regime changes so they can take over their land and resources just to benefit America interests. That's always been like that CIA and SA artists, alphabet boys. They want to find, that is the new way of conquering territory. They don't have the horses with the flags no more. And it's fascist. It is Nazism. Who? 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 Got the guts to challenge Hitler? You must be out of your mind. He should have no challenger. He had no challenger. That's why he remained in power and did what he did. If we allowed Trump to have unlimited access to to the White House without having Joe Biden to challenge him or Bernie Sanders to challenge him. In his second term, or anybody in the second term, I mean, there should have been plenty of people to challenge him and um, Trump in the second term. Just because you don't have a challenger, or just because you want that person not to be challenged, doesn't mean that they shouldn't be challenged, and it definitely don't mean they can't be challenged, and definitely don't mean that the party don't have to facilitate it. The party is supposed to facilitate it because it's electoral power, power um, party. Joe Biden don't own the Democratic Party. He may be the leader, but he don't own that organization. You look on the bottom of the organization papers, he's don't don't know. He's not even the DNC president, even though he got a lap dog like Jamie Harrison as the president, should have been um Stacey Abrams. Either way, they both suck. Would have been sucked at the job. This is not. America, this is not a democracy, but yet you can get up there and talk about democracy. Our democracy is being torn away, and we're at a crossroad right now. 
where we can't have this foolishness going on with you guys trying to challenge it when we got a, a fascist right-wing government that's trying to take over and put y'all back in chains and, and, and burn books and all that kind of stuff. Like a, a, a Democratic, Democratic primary. primary like like Joe Joe Biden. The reality is, is if, if the man, man wants to run for president, president he, he is, is going, going to be the Democratic, Democratic nominee. nominee. If the man want to run for president, he's going to be the Democratic. The only reason why you can assure that, Ms. Sanders, is be by doing what you always do, rig. By being biased, like moving the points to have a debate, by moving the dates of the um, primary elections, by closing the primaries, where nobody else but registered Democrats can vote. In other words, forcing people to be a part of our church cult uh, in order to have something to say about our church court, court, cult. Well, she went on another show and did the same thing she went on Morning Joe. All right, now here's the deal. Uh, the Republican Party, I mean, the Democratic Party getting nervous. And... uh. Robert F. Kennedy is gaining some space, and uh, they don't like it. So here's Simone Sanders again talking about there will be no Democratic Party. Girl, primary. Girl, it is going to be a Democratic primary. We're in the middle of it. For them not to allow this primary to happen is undemocratic. So you can't call it a Democratic primary, and you're being undemocratic by not allowing this primary. Number two, you may do whatever you can to not debate. But um, to me, I call that your loss. That means you're weak. That means you don't have no power. You don't have no guts. You don't have no balls to back up your record and to move forward to push a new record. You're weak. You're cowly. And if I was Robert F. Kennedy, I would go the way of Mr. T and Rocky and call you out. Keep everybody weak. I don't want a man like me to have the title because I'm not a puppet like that fool up there. And why don't you tell all these nice folks why you've been ducking me? Politics, man. I told you I wasn't going away. You got your shot. Now give me mine. And I'm telling you, if they sit there and tell you this foolishness that somebody should not be challenged, every person in office should have a challenge when it comes to their next two year, one year, four year, eight year, ten year. You don't just let them slide through that because there's always somebody that might have a better vision. And this person, the vision that they gave you ain't coming to pass. They not have they they only told you that crap just to get the election. Once they get in office, they ain't doing nothing. So how do you how do you put the pressure on them? How do you um beat them into permission? Don't give them another four years. Look here, I, I, look here, black people. Look, look. Uh, you know, uh, I did the Lily Ledbetter act. I did that for my, my white mama. And so of course I had my white mama's back. Uh, I did the DACA. Uh, you know, I did that um for the Latinos, even though they didn't vote for me like you did. Look here, LGBTQ. That's you. I got you. Black people, give me another four years. Give me another four years and I got your back. Lying son of a... And here, I'm telling you, and Simone, you know me. We've met in Brooklyn. Coffee shop. Remember that? Coffee shop, Bernie Rally. Remember that? Yeah, I know you remember me. The people ain't going to put up with this bull crap. The people ain't going to put up with this gaslighting. And that's why I'm here. And folks, if you see this video taken down, go to Rumble or go to um, BitChute and you'll find the video there because we got to push back on this stuff. We're not going to sit here and let people tell you stupid stuff like this. We can't let this happen. These people are gaslighting you. They're conning you, telling you there can't be no debate. The Democratic side, Bobby Kennedy Jr., doing well. He's at 19%. Ha hasn't really. Now, Bobby Kennedy Jr., not only is doing well, but a Rasmussen poll recently showed Bobby Kennedy neck and neck with Joe Biden. Now, I told you guys, once Bobby Kennedy come on the scene, Marion Williamson is going to fly to the side. She's going to be like that Homer Simpson meme going into the bushes. Not that she's trying to go into the bushes, but the poll's going to push her behind back in the bushes. 
and Robert F. Kennedy, whether you like him or not, whether whether you like his stance on the vaccine, whether you like his stance on whatever, people like him. People like the Kennedy name. Black people like the Kennedy name. And now Joe Biden got something to be worried about because black people love the Kennedys because black people figure it was the Kennedys that got us uh, our equal rights, which we haven't gotten it fully yet, but they did help a little bit. And the Kennedys had no choice to sign something into law because we were about to turn up if they didn't. So don't sit there and put it on the Kennedys alone. It was you who did it. You the one turned up that had these people in fear. And that's why they bring in this influctuation of so many other people in the country because they fear the power that you have and they got to try to water it down and try to get people outside of you, the divide us to get people off your mission off your goal to be antagonist to your mission your goal black people you don't want to put the pressure on the kennedys to do that so don't sit there and make it seem like kennedy was a hero and he just wanted to do this none of these people wanted to do this they had to be pressured into doing this well let me get back to Simone Sanders, who say there will not be any primaries she don't make that decision understand this folks where her mouth saying that she don't make, she have no decision on whether we're going to have a primary or not because she's nobody when it comes to that. Nobody. She don't work for the DNC. She's just a mouthpiece, a milly mouthpiece for the talking heads on CNN, MSNBC, and all these other news platforms. Sitting there, they're looking at her haircut tighter than mine gotten that that much out there i mean it's and i'm starting to hear more and more talk about him are we going to actually have a challenge here i'm trying not to laugh joe there's <laughs> not going to now here she is trying to be in denial i'm not trying to laugh joe and then she, she's trying to go into reason why they're not going to be a primary simone the mammy sanders there will be a primary now, whether Robert wins or not, that's not the point. The point is, they you cannot say there cannot be no primaries. This is not Nazi Germany. This is not no country where you kill any challengers. What, you going to do what they did to Robert Kennedy's dad? Knock him out the box because he was challenging for the presidency? You gonna do what he did to what they did to his uncle? There will be a primary. And ain't nothing your big mouth can do about it, lady. So all I can do is go again and hit the button and tell you. You know your damn role and shut your damn mouth. That's right. Know your role and shut your mouth. Your role is news commentary. You not a political strategist anymore. Never have and never will be because you have no strategy. Know your own. Shut your mouth. Hey, can I just, can I stop you for a second? Do you know how many people said the same thing about oh Donald God, Trump in 2015 true. on yes, this show? Except I know I'm on, on one. He asks a valid question. Now, I'm not a fan of Joe and Mika and, you know, I'm not a fan. But he asks you a serious question. You take it as a joke. And then he come back and say, look, you sit up there laughing. That's what they said about Trump. And he ended up being the president of the United States. And there's people like you, antagonists, that take this for a joke that cause people to be more on Trump's side instead of taking this serious. This ain't no joke. This ain't no game. Every election, there should be somebody to challenge. Number one, mainly to get them to go further to commit more to the policies that they didn't challenge, that they did not complete, you got to challenge them and put them on the pressure to make sure they complete it. If they're the nominee in the next four years, you got to get their mouth to say, I got to do this. Or you got to put some more policies and force that person to support it because uh, if not, you're not going to get elected. So the number one purpose of challenging somebody is to move them over to your side policy-wise and the number two reason is that person probably have a record uh, in the first four years of being horrible 
and why should we give them another four years? And if somebody has a better vision, why he don't get a shot? Sitting up there laughing. And see, remember when I told you, and um, I'm quite sure a lot of, com lot, lot of other commentators told you about black people in media. Black people in media, that's going to do two things. If they're surrounded by a bunch of white people, get ready. They're going to throw you under the bus. They're not going to cape for you. They're not going to protect you. They're going to throw you under the bus if they're around a panel of other white people. And I did that with the video Roland Martin. Just kids can't wait to get at the black community for not having Joe Biden's back. Call them stupid, mealy mouth. Same thing Simone Sanders. Simone Sanders ain't nothing but the female version of Roland Martin. She even looked like him. Look, almost looked just like him. I will the know. same exact Left. thing. Yes, because there was going to be a Republican primary, but. That is not why, because there's going to be a Republican primary. Okay, let's say there's going to be a Republican primary. There was a Republican primary. Whether the person was sitting in office don't mean nothing. And this is what she's trying to do. She's trying to go on this network to say, they, the reason they were willing to challenge, the reason Trump was able to challenge and win is because there were no sitting Republicans. That ain't got nothing to do with anything. Whether you're sitting in office as an incumbent or not, you should be a challenge. You shouldn't have, shouldn't have a straight shot into the seat. You need to have your iron sharpened. You need to be pressed and pushed towards certain policies. To not challenge a person to do that would be dumb and undemocratic. Because the people need to have an opportunity to do a report card check on your behind, to do a check on you, to let you know who's really in charge. That if you don't get your job done, you out. We're going to put somebody in. What do we look like? giving somebody another straight four years, that is, I wouldn't even say that's communism. That is dictatorship. You're trying to dictate to the people how it goes and trying to tell them and trying to, you know how this goes. If he's the nominee, if he's the sitting president, he's not going to get a challenger and we're not going to entertain a challenger. He's going to be the nominee for the next four years. How stupid do you sound, woman? I, I mean, I don't understand this, man. Some of these things don't take a brain. I'm not the smartest person in the world, let alone the smartest person in New York, let alone the smartest person in a certain part of New York. <laughs> Probably I'm not the smartest person in the building, let alone the house. But common sense to tell you this. I really think that uh, the mealy mouth Democrats, as I like to call them, here she go. I really think like to call them mealy mouth. Why would you call your fellow Democrats mealy mouth? Because they speak up. Because they're in opposition. Because they mean business. So they ain't got time for political games. That they're going to push you. That they're going to pressure you. They're going to purify you. If you're not doing it, we don't want you. Because they talk like that. Or you want somebody to just sit there and let somebody just walk over them. Get in line. You, you need to get in line. That's fascism. Ordering people to do something that they don't want to do. You need to just get in line. I had somebody tell me that. Somebody who I love, really love. So you're going to get in line and support Hillary Clinton? I'm like, get in line. Look, late, Miss Lady, I love you. I love you like you're, my, you're like my third mama. But to sit there and tell, ask me, am I going to get in line? You hear yourself? Get in line and support Hillary Clinton. No. I don't support people who dog my people out and help facilitate a bill that decimate the black community right along with a drug issue that was decimating the community. You got two things that decimate my community. You and the CINA and everybody else in the political position pushing these drugs in there to help the Contras and you using people to do that, especially black people, to try to get that dollar. And then you're going to turn around and say, we need to kill these black people who we use. <laughs> and we need to make some kind of profit off this. 
Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but here's Simone Sanders, who probably would have supported Hillary Clinton. But she, 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 she didn't at first. She was on the Bernie Sanders campaign, but Nina Turner took a spotlight, and that, that made her a little better. And some of my progressive friends who would like to live in a fantasy land, they need to come back to reality. Yeah. And the reality is this. The sitting president of the United States of America... Now, obviously, this is a talking point that has been given to her. And when she go do the news round, she got it down packed to a script. Somebody gave her a script to say this. And she's saying this effectively. Now, don't get me wrong. She believes this. She probably wrote the script, but she got it down to a science. This is my talking point when I get on media. To shame the progressives, my progressive friends, and to shame the milly mouth Democrats who have no brain and they need to be whipped up into, um, they need to be reprogrammed. They need to be put in, they need to be told to get in line because they out of line. And I'm the mama, I'm the mammy. I'm going to sit there and get, in, get them in line. America is a Democrat, a Democrat that would like to run for re-election so much so that he has declared a re-election campaign. Right. In that case, the Democratic National Committee will not facilitate a primary process. There will you hear how foolishness they say and still the same talking points. How can you say that the Democratic, the DNC, will not facilitate a primary campaign? The DNC has no choice but to facilitate. Now, making the decision who win? That's a different story because it's rigged at the end of the day. You don't make the determination of who become the president. The super delegates and the delegates make that determination on who become president. Having super delegates and delegates, people with money to make the final decision, or people with that kind of political power that make the final decision over the people, that is not democratic. That is fascism. That is not democracy. That is a dictatorship. They are dictating the will of the country, the new vision for the country, not the people. And you're one of them, Simone. You are a super delegate. Oh, you, you, you ain't think I knew? Oh, you been knew that. You been one. But let's get, let this continue. She's trying to take the can. <laughs> She have no clue. There will be no debate stage for Bobby Kennedy, Marine Will Marianne Williamson, or anyone else to stand So we're going to have another Bobby Kennedy. In so for you to say there will be no debate stage, it's not. For you to say that is so idiotic. To not allow a debate on a debate stage, that's the same as saying we're not going to allow any challengers to voice their vision for America against a person who has a vision for America that's not working. We're not going to allow any other voices of a vision to come into this political process. Why? Why? Why will you not allow another voices or another person's vision to challenge the current president's vision for America? Why? You're scared. You fear that your money magnet might not have its power no more. And now with Bobby Kennedy sitting almost tied, according to Red Smusen poll, to Joe Biden, poor Marion Williamson, she's going to the wind. <laughs> poor Marion Williamson. You're a little nervous. There will be a primary. There is a primary. And there will always, it's always one. The point is, can you convince somebody not to run? But you got it out there where they have a right to run. And if you don't give them that right to run, you're not considered a political party. Somebody got to run in the party for you have a front man. You're not going to sit there and let, uh, uh, just let somebody not get challenged. If you do, then you can't holler democracy. You can't get mad at Trump. You can't get mad at um, MAGA and all those hat-wearing people. You can't get mad at them when you doing just as bad. An empty chair in the debate, right? There will be no debate. <laughs> yeah, no debate. Yeah. The Democratic yeah. National Committee. How can you, you can't make that decision that there will be no debates. Who are you, Simone Sanders, but a commentary person? And even if Jamie Dimon, the black brother who sits on the DNC as the president of the DC, the head of the DNC, for him to say there will be no 
debates. See, you guys are making it seem like we're black people being undemocratic. You should be saying, I'm not going to sit there and say that. No, they need to be some debates. I, I'm not going to sit here and throw my 100% support on somebody who might not have a better vision. That man might have a better vision for my people. That man might have a better vision for serving black Americans than the current person's position right now because I've seen nothing to serve black America but platitudes. Promises and platitudes, the PPs. Come on now. You got her black tail on that panel with four white people, and I told you about that, what black people would do when you got when they're the only person on the panel. They're gonna sit there and and and, and kiss white behind. They ain't gonna sit there and challenge white behind. Like she's doing. And Jamie Harrison. If he not if it wasn't for James Clyburn getting that posi- giving, giving him that position. But guess what? He's going to do the same thing. And look, like I said, if I was Bobby Kennedy or Bobby Kennedy um, uh, political strategist, I would tell Bobby Kennedy to do an old school press conference. Because he's at 30% right now. He's neck and neck with Joe Biden. And we're at the beginning of this campaign. That quick, in less than a month, he's got neck to neck to Joe Biden. I would call him out. You're a coward. You're a punk. You fear me. You fear challenging you. You fear debating me. That shows your weakness. I know, you know who would have said that? Somebody that most of us don't like. Trump would have said that. Trump would have called George Jeb Bush out. Trump and has. Trump would have called Ted Cruz out and has. Trump would have, Trump would have called out Chris Christie, one of the biggest mouths on, on, on the planet, and have. Trump would have called you out, oh, you don't want to debate me? Then that shows you weak. That means your vision, you don't have no vision for America. If you got a vision of America, meet me on this debate stage and talk. let's talk about it. For you not to mean you're a coward and you have no vision for America and you have no reason to be president. That's what I would do. You got to have these things to sharpen your axe and make America a better country. You can't just have somebody who probably have a great vision, won't even push it. So you got to challenge them to push it. Look, you talk the talk, but what's up? Why you ain't done it? You sitting up here and said to all these black people, black people, uh, I, I hear you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here today, but you're doing all these policies but for everybody else but black. What's up with that? Let's talk about it. Meet me on the stage. Give me your reason, your excuse why you ain't did nothing for black people. Where the hate bill? You got a hate crime bill for everybody else, but where the hate How Why you allow, sitting up here, allowing these people, your boy, Eric Adams, to sit here and allow this man to get off scot free? And where's the witnesses who helped him hold that man down? Why they ain't charged? You challenge them. That's the purpose of a primary. You have to challenge the people on the issues that they're running that they may have not completed or they may have just told you a lie and had no plan to fulfill it in the first place. Somebody need to challenge them on that. But you want somebody not to challenge them on that, go another four years of the same old bull crap and not doing nothing. The committee administers the debates and they're not going to set up a primary process for debates to for someone to challenge the head of the Democratic Party. Yeah. They- now, if you go down here, you'll see the transcript. I'm not going to go over the transcript. You heard it from my own big mouth. Joe Biden, Biden is polling is horrible. Most of America don't want him to rerun. Heck, most Democrats don't want him to run for president. And old mealy mouth, Simone Sanders, is wondering why is that. They're losing their minds. So let me get these mealy mouth Democrats straight because for them not to want Joe Biden to run for another four years, dude is 80 some years old and can go any day. And I understand she don't mind that because that will put her former boss in a position to be president if Joe Biden's win. I told you the only way Kamala Harris is going to become president if Joe Biden win the nomination and all of a sudden he leaves within the next four years and she become president. She would never be elected president. She was never elected. She had to drop out in the primaries. That's how bad she was. Her poll numbers suck. 
she hasn't been a first a great first lady i mean vice president and the vice president don't have that much to do but her trip to africa horrible her policies concerning immigration she's supposed to be the immigration czar horrible And now you open up the lane. If you don't have primaries, you open up the lane for a Donald Trump win. Lord God, Ron DeSantis maybe. <laughs> but definitely a Donald Trump win again. And right now, he's winning. So you better open up the, you better have an open primary challenge for somebody that's going to take on Trump because Biden ain't, Biden don't have the juice to take on Trump. All this stuff Trump been going through for the four years of this constant witch hunting is only made this fool stronger. And it's just going to reinforce him. Plus the fact that Trump is a New Yorker. Trump is not from Scranton, Pennsylvania. He's not from bougie California. Shout out to my California people. I'm talking about when I say bougie, I'm talking about Rodeo Drive, places like that. That's where Marion Williams from. She's from Bougie Rodeo Drive area. She ran for office in Rodeo Drive, in the district of Rodeo Drive. I keep telling you fools, Marion Williamson is not a outsider. She is not a, a, a needle mover when it comes to a revolution. She's not. She's a wealthy elitist. Her favorite clients as a guru, as a, a counselor, is Oprah, the Oprah Winfrey's of the world. All the Hollywood elites go to her for spiritual counseling. She is not. Let me shut up about Marion Williams. Keep telling you, she is not a outsider. She is not a progressive giant. She is not what you call a populist. She is not a populist. She's another elitist. And look, I... I'm not, I'm, 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 you know, my main focus is what you're going to do for my community. And he who has a plan and plan on putting that on a platform and pushing it to the moon, that's the guy I'm supporting. I'm not going to be dealing with these lie. Said I'll do it, but don't do it. But look here, give me another four terms and I'll do it. And you're going to lie in that four term. You're not going to get that bill with me. The person who did that before messed it up for you. You're not going to get the chance. I need somebody who done it in the past, present, and plan on doing it in the future. And right now, no. And the only reason I kind of like Bobby Kennedy, not saying I'm going to support him, but I've been a fan and been talking about alternative treatments to dealing with different ailments. I can't say the word. When the vid hit real hard uh, at the beginning, there were alternative medicines that you could have treated yourself with, but... They shut it, shut me down from saying something. But Bobby Kennedy was always like, look, we got to look at all options. And we got to make sure this one works. And you can't say it worked within, with two years of testing people. You just can't say it works 100%. It's definitely not a cure. And then when it comes to climate control and things like that, but my thing concerning Bobby Kennedy is what you're What's your agenda for black people? See, as of right now, he don't got one. That's why I'm not on his train. Marion Williamson got one, but she lowballing us and being condescending about it. That's why she's not on my plane. But if you don't have a black agenda and you don't, you don't support reparations to, to the tune of 70, 70 trillion, what the economist says, not what you says, when it comes to Simone Sanders talking this bull crap, you need to hit, get back on her Twitter. She has a Twitter. I tell you guys, you can challenge these people through Twitter. Going to a YouTube channel ain't going to challenge them. Twitter is their direct account. It's a direct comeback. It's a direct reaction toward a politician. They say something you don't agree with, you can clap back on them on that. Through your comments, you can say something that challenged them. And look, they see it. Oh, they see it. They see it. Yep, they see it. They know, they know. I'm always challenging AOC, always in her face. To the fact right now her handler know me. They got a picture of me in the office. They see me, they go the other way. 
Because I'm going to challenge you. Jamal Bowman, the same thing. He's, look, it's a whole bunch of things I need to talk to Jamal Bowman. Last time I saw him, he ducked me. And I just had a simple question. Duck me. But they can't do that on Twitter. Only thing they can do is block me, which I have. <laughs> I am blocked. You know, everybody from Roland Martin to, you, you know, they, they block me. Because they don't like nobody to challenge them. Challenging them. Once they feel like they have to go through all that energy to block so many people, they'll realize that they're on the wrong track. And the only reason they'll stay on that track is that they got a personal agenda, and it doesn't include you. And Simone Sanders is one. Simone Sanders has a personal agenda. She wants to be the queen maker. She wants to be the queen maker, just like Kyle Kalinske wants to be the queen maker. Somebody wants to be the person to go to when it comes to po po winning in politics, and neither one of these people are the one to go to. Marion Williamson is less than 4% now. Don't listen to Kyle Kalinske and his lies about her being a uh, 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 populist for the people when she's always been a wealthy elitist from Rodeo Drive trying to run for office to represent these bougie rich people. Don't sit there and let some man, uh, Simone Sanders gaslight y'all telling y'all there will be no primary debates. Mealy y'all, mealy mouth. And my progressive friends, you need to shut up and get in line and all that kind of stuff. Joe Biden did that during the Hillary Clinton days. Oh, look, you know, we getting our fights. We getting our fist fights and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, they all going to vote for Hillary Clinton. No, they didn't all vote for her. You guys got to stop this. Thinking the world is going to hang by your words and just do it because you say it. Folks, there's a primary. Three people. Joe Biden, Marion Williamson, and RFK Jr. Right now, RFK Jr., thanks to his name recognition, thanks to the legacy his family had with black people, black people are starting to migrate over to RFK. Why? I don't know why they would support them not knowing his platform, because we're going to go over it next week. I mean, this week. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, the Kennedy name has a soft spot in black people 45 and up. Not with black people 45 and up. But because he's been good on climate change and because he's been good on, um, um, he gets the progressive side. Um, because he's open about policies concerning uh, vaccines and things like that, a lot of Republicans are leaning on toward him over Trump. So this guy's getting a mixture of people that's interested in his campaign and cause him to be neck and neck with Joe Biden. Something Joe Biden can't do. He can't get the progressives, uh, real progressives now, because real progressives are not in a party. And he can't get the Republicans like he wants to. So he's in a situation where he's really going to have to campaign. There is a primary. They don't need to be no debates. Town halls, you can always have a town hall. And in a town hall, you can really, really call out your opponent record, and you can call him a coward for not debating you. Call him a coward. Call him weak. Call him a punk. Nobody likes to hear that language, and that's a language language that makes me want to challenge you. Want to be who you calling a punk? Who you calling a coward? Man, I meet you over here, but you got to put those words out there to draw people out. You got to say those words. You got to say you got to say something to get people to want to be. These people are not going to give you on the, a debate stage. They don't have to. They can change the numbers also. That's how they did it with Tulsi Gabbard when she started getting some some, some, uh, some um, numbers. They kept changing the numbers to try to kick her off the debate stage because she was kicking behind on that stage. And I'm not a real fan of her either. Used to be, but not no more. I've seen her true colors. You guys, don't let these people gaslight you, man. I'm Bob Brown with the Bob Brown Show on the go. Hey, if you want to support the channel, right there, PayPal. Uh, or just hit the like button and share it. Good morning and good night.